Well, it's fair to say those tactical changes that we did make going into yesterday's episode have worked since then. We have not lost a single game, haven't even drawn one. And add to that, we finally found a goalkeeper better than Issa Dogan and join us here at Locomotive Leipzig. <laughs> Welcome to episode 22 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today. We take on both SV Mippen and Osnabrück at home either side of transfer deadline day, albeit not much money left in our wage budget because as I said during the intro, we have finally found a goalkeeper who is better than Issa Dogan. So he is now here at the club, but hopefully we can sell a few players and also get someone in on loan still looking for a backup to Jamal Ziani while Kevin Zizek is out with that broken ankle. So if you're looking forward to all of that hopefully coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated. But as I said, our form off the back of yesterday's episode where we pulled off that big win in the first round of the DFB Pocket as well, of course, as a win over Bayreuth. If you missed that episode, I'll leave a link to it. Over in the top right corner, we have continued our winning ways. That first game off the back of that episode, quite a big one, because at that point, Einstein, Braunschweig were the team in third on the table. Thankfully, picked up a 2-1 win a goal early to Ziani, followed by 1-2 Anton Bullen early in the second half. They did grab one back with around about 10 minutes left, but thankfully we did hold on to continue our surge in form off the back of that. We took on a few teams who were just struggling a little bit more. Bet Vaichi 2-0 at home, two second half goals there to Mike Awosu, and then took on Victoria Cologne and picked up a 2-1 win there away from home. Thankfully off the back of them grabbing the equaliser, we went down the other end almost immediately, and it was Jamal Ziani who did pick up a winner, so that means... We have surged right up the table, of course, in that second game in yesterday's episode. We just got out of the relegation zone now. We are on the verge of going into a promotion type spot. As you can see, currently Bayreuth are in fourth, which is actually third at the moment, with Schalke seconds being ahead of them. They are a team who cannot go up. So currently Bayreuth are in the playoff spot, and we are three points behind Heidenheim and a further two points behind Wehem Westbarn. So we could actually make our way into a playoff spot during the course of today's episode and hopefully with this newfound form and this newfound roles that we have put in our fluid counter-attacking tactic we can continue to have a good remainder of the season hopefully this time go on up to the two Bundesliga but as I said you may have even seen it during those results that we did just run through we have finally found someone who has joined us as a goalkeeper that we could actually afford their wages who is an upgrade on Issa Dogen so the new sign that we have made here at Lokomotiv Leipzig is Matthias Hasman. He is the new goalkeeper here. Three star current ability, three and a half star potential. So on base value, doesn't actually look like too much of an upgrade, but based on attributes, he is better. And already his performances have just been a bit more assured in goal than Issa Dogan. Of course, he had a few shockers in that first episode of the new season at the end of last week. To be fair to him, wasn't too bad yesterday. But this guy already in only a few appearances too so far does look like he is a little less error prone. So he's our new number one here at Locomotive Leipzig. is a little bit of potential, only 24 years old, and he is on a contract. If we go over and just make sure that this is right, of £1,500 a week. So it does mean at the moment our wage budget is back to being very close to the limit. We are only about £100 away from going over that, but still have some assets that we are looking to sell going into transfer deadline day off the back of this first game. In today's episode, the likes of Tobias Dombrower and now also Issa Dogen is probably someone we can look to let go of as well just because he doesn't have a great deal of potential and has been a little bit so-so, I think. It is fair to say we've got some good young promising goalkeepers at the club who could step in as a backup instead of him. And also, if we get rid of him in time, we could also try and get a free loan from Eintracht Frankfurt for that backup position as well so hopefully with that improvement in both goalkeeper and our tactic that we did make going into the start of yesterday's episode we can continue this good run of form that we are currently on coming up today we take on two teams who so far this season do look like 
They are struggling just a little bit first up. We host SV Meppen. They are exactly where they were expected to be on the league table at the moment. In 16th, coming to this one, having lost to Victoria Cologne and drawn against Osnabrück. So hopefully we can pick up a result against these guys. And then, of course, off the back of a bit of a break around transfer deadline day, we will take on Osnabrück. These guys expect to be doing a lot better than they currently are. They are all the way down in 17th. That could change by the time we do come back for that second game of today's episode. But still, that should be a tougher game than our first one. But based on how they're doing so far, we'll see how that one goes. Hopefully, we can continue our good run of form if we do get the job done in that first game of today's episode. Also, a quick injury update going into this one. Just two injuries here at the club currently. Unfortunately, still Kevin Zizek will be out for quite a while. That's one of the areas we are looking to strengthen going into transfer deadline day. A backup striker on loan from Eintracht Frankfurt. So far, haven't quite found someone who actually wants to join us here at the club, but thankfully there are quite a few options at Eintracht. But the other player who's picked up an injury, albeit he should be back for the second game of today's episode, is Taylor Biddy, some pulled ankle ligaments, so he won't be making his way onto the bench for this first game, but it does mean that the youngster from our under-19s and Danny Hermel can make his way into the squad instead. But apart from that, we are pretty good going into this first game as we take on SV Meppen and hopefully might even sneak ourselves into one of those promotion spots. And here are the team sheets for this first game of today's episode. And you will be able to tell we've made quite a bit of rotation for this one. We are in a good patch of form, but ideally we'll keep the injury numbers down so quite a few rotation players do get a chance in this game with our first teamers on a heavy workload, could have risked them with a big break coming up off the back of this game, but forward, play it safe and hopefully still be able to pick up three points against an SV Meppen outfit who are struggling so far this season. And nearly up to the 10 minute mark and we get the first highlight in this game, it was Meppen there today in the blue who briefly had position, but thankfully we do get it back and knock it about here in the midfield, some really nice short passing here at Tilgan in a little bit of space, nice ball over the top there. For our new midfielder and layman, formerly, I believe he was from RB Leipzig. Good chance for him there, but unfortunately, the goalkeeper for Meppen does come up with a very good point blank save to keep it at nil all. And unfortunately, Lamptey today in that DM role can't quite get on the end of that subsequent corner. Meppen, in fact, might do something here on the counter attack as the highlight does continue, albeit not for very long. We get the first decent chance, but still nil all here. Coming up to the 15 minute mark, and another highlight does start. Lucas Search plays that one for two layman. Does briefly lose out on position, but does quite well there to reclaim it. Jamal Ziani with a good chance, but unfortunately puts that one just over the bar. Some decent chances, but still nil all. And only a few minutes off the back of those previous chances. Now we go down the other end here for a throw into SV Mepin. That ball though is quite a bit on it. And Hasman, our new goalkeeper, does come and claim that one pretty safely, albeit you'd expect that as well from Issa Dogan, wasn't under too much pressure for that one. Thankfully, they hit the ball back to us off the back of that clearance. And now Zimmer, back in the team and back from injury, starts to make some headway down this left-hand side. Does lose out on position there, though. So it might be Meppen who get a chance here to do something on the counter-attack. But thankfully, we do nearly win that ball back. We'll just zoom out here as there's a bit of action happening down that left-hand side. Ziani, though, some good hustle there to get that ball back for us. Now Zimmer back to Ziani. Makes his way inside the box. Tight angle, but beats the goalkeeper. Sneaks it inside that far post. And about halfway through the first half, we do take a 1-0 lead. And based on the highlights we have seen so far, we've had some pretty good chances up until now. Thankfully, we do make one count. And Ziani had a big hand in that goal. Won the ball back for us. Good one too there between him and Linus Zimmer. And beats the goalkeeper there with a pretty nice finish along the ground. And we do take... A 1-0 lead halfway through the first half. And in fact, right off the back of the restart, there is another highlight off the back of just making sure that he was onside, which he indeed was. So we'll get back underway here, and it is SB Meppen who are on the ball. They knock it back there to their defenders. We'll just zoom in a little bit now, but it looks like this highlight might not be so focused down this near side. But Burling tries to play a ball over there to Klein Sorge back down that side. So we'll zoom out again. Good chance here for Castaños in front of goal for Meppen. Thankfully, though, Misses the target, and we hold on to our 1-0 lead. And up to the half-hour marks, there's a bit happening in the first half of this one. We do have a throw and looking near far post for a Hindu. He gets a header off. It was a bit of a weak one and went wide of the target. So we are still 1-0 in front. 
And that's half time in this first game of today's episode. And that was a pretty good first half. It's fair to say they did have a good chance there, mapping off the back of that first goal that we did get through Jamal Ziani to grab an equaliser. But really, that's the only thing they've done so far in this game. Otherwise, we have well and truly been on the front foot. Everyone out there looks like they're on a decent ranking. So we'll just adjust some opposition instructions and tell them we're doing well. Could maybe just step things up a little bit and get things back underway still with that 1-0 lead. And in fact, there's a highlight here immediately from the restart yet again. This is Julian Weigel on the ball off the back of that pass from Ziani from the centre circle. Hopefully, we can grab a cushion goal in this one sooner rather than later. In our last couple of games, we have left it a little bit close despite the fact we have been a bit more dominant. A couple of 2-1 wins in those last three games that we have played since yesterday's episode. But so far... A little bit rough early in this half, it's fair to say. We hit the ball a few times and have lost out two SV Mepin players. And they do get a chance here on the overlap. Zimmer there gets beaten, but a really good save. And thankfully, I think that was Lucas Search who clears that one from a dangerous position. Yet again, they try and put a ball into the mixer. Thankfully, it's blocked. Thankfully, not a handball either because it did look a little bit suspicious. But a bit of a rough start to the second half, thankfully. Still 1-0 ahead. And we're just entering the last 20 minutes of this game. Just that one highlight so far. In the second half, we're going to make a few substitutions here. Unfortunately, a Tilgan down to a red heart. So Anton Bulland can come on for him. Also, Ben Luca Fisher today at right back. has just picked up a yellow card. Eric Vufak can come on for him. But we are still up by one goal to nil with 20 minutes left. And only a couple of minutes on from those previous substitutions. Now a few more of our players are down to red hearts. Three of them, so they will be the three coming off with our last couple of of substitutions, Luko Vayner can come on for one of those midfielders also. I think Leon Heinke might be the option. He can actually play a bit further forward than someone like Piplica. So he will also come on and play, I think, in place of Tim Lehman for the rest of the second half. And as well as that, we do have Jamal Ziani, the goal scorer, down to a red heart. Finn Speckman will come on for him. So that's all our subs used. Still 1-0 ahead. And eventually something else does happen in the second half. With about 10 minutes left, we do have a free kick here, which Vufak will try and put into that top right corner. Decent save there from Shock and goal now. Speckman is on the ball. He gets bundled over, and we win a penalty. Was not expecting that off the back of a free kick highlight. And Vufak now gets a much easier chance from the penalty spot to give us a cushion goal and make sure we do pick up the points. The goalkeeper goes the right way, but thankfully Vufak still beats him. His first goal of the season, that will help him out, being our set piece taker. Hopefully, he can get a few more when he does come off of the bench. It wasn't a great penalty, truth be told, but thankfully, just beyond the reach of the goalkeeper. And hopefully, that will do it. 2 nil up inside the last few minutes. And we're just about to enter injury time in this game, not too long off the back of that penalty, which Vufak did put away to give us a 2 nil lead in these last five minutes. We've just been time-wasting a little bit, but thankfully, do pick up a fairly comfortable win to keep our resurgence off the back of a rough start going here in the free league. I got that first half goal for Ruziani. Thankfully held on off the back of that. A good chance to Mepin, which did go begging. And then off the back of a free kick late in the second half, they did give away a penalty. And Vufak tucks that one away. And we pick up a pretty fair 2-0 win there based on the XG and the overall stats. And we'll see what that does to the table going in to this upcoming break that we do have in and around transfer deadline day. And as you can see with that win, we do move up into the promotion playoff spot, only fourth on the table, but with Schalke also in that top four, it does mean we are the team in that promotion playoff spot. Of course, they cannot get promoted from this league. So we are right in that promotion hunt now off the back of that rough start that we did have at the end of last week. And hopefully we can build on that when we come back for our next game against Osnabrück. But before then, hopefully some business gets done on transfer deadline day. And we come back on transfer deadline day only a few days off the back of that 2-0 win there over SV Mepin. And we have done our first bit of business here on the day. And it is the deal that we were expecting to get done. A striker in on loan from Eintracht Frankfurt for no wages. Just to be a bit of an improvement as a backup to Jamal Ziani, of course, while Kevin Zek is out with that broken ankle. The player that we eventually got here was Jean Ole Shimp. It's going to be really hard not to call him the Shrimp, but he is a player with two star current ability, four and a half star potential, decent finishing, and to be fair, decent attributes as a poacher. We're going to use him more as a pressing forward. Some of those areas not quite as strong for that role, but at least he looks a bit better of a player 
than Finn Speckman and does give us some extra cover in that area should we get one more injury because that was the big concern until we do get Zizek back from that broken ankle. But there is the player who we have brought in to just give us a little bit more depth up front for the remainder of this first half of the season anyway, as I said, until Kevin Zizek does come back from that broken ankle. We get the shrimp, jean Ole Schimpf, in from Eintracht Frankfurt so far. Unfortunately, our transfer listed players no interest in the likes of Tobias Dombrodar or Issa Dogen, so it doesn't look like at the moment we are going to be selling anyone here on transfer deadline day. But if we do, we'll come back. Otherwise, we'll see you shortly for that game against Osnabrück. And we are back indeed for that second game of today's episode, a few weeks off the back of that first one. And we have done transfer deadline day, just that one bit of business. And as you can see, for the first time this season, that's pretty close to our first choice 11, apart from the fact, of course, Ziani up front in place of the injured Kevin Zizek. But back to full strength apart from that, which is very nice. And hopefully we can keep ourselves right in the promotion hunt. As we take on an Osnabrück team, expected to be right there with us. But at the moment, who are struggling. And around about halfway through the first half, we do get the first highlight in this one. It is a corner there to Osnabrück. Thankfully, a new goalkeeper in Hasman does come out to claim that one. So far, looks like he's been the best player in this game. On a 7.0, tries to ping that one out, looking for a Wosu, who does actually track back quite nicely there to get that ball back for us. And hopefully, we can do something here on the counter attack. A Wosu controls that very nicely from that ball from Osman and Tilgen, buries that one bottom left corner. And a similar time to where we scored in that first game of today's episode. Yet again, we take a 1 0 lead here at home. Good work there from a Wosu off the back of that clearance from our goalkeeper. And we find a Tilgen. Nice ball for Owosu, good first touch there, and just sneaks that one inside that far post. And yet again, we go 1-0 up. And that was the only highlight of the first half in the second game of today's episode. But yet again, as you can tell from the stats, it's been a pretty good performance. Just that one goal that we did see through Mike Owosu. And yet again, we go into the sheds with a fairly comfortable 1-0 lead. Hopefully, we can also grab a cushion goal in the second half of this one. We're going to make one change at halftime. Linus Zimmer looks a little bit more tired. Then some of our other players out there, Eric Vufak, can come on for him for the second half. But so far, pretty happy with how this one is going. Halftime message will be pretty similar to the previous game. And we'll get things back underway yet again. 1-0 up at home. And five minutes into the second half, we get our first highlight here. Starting off with a throw down this left-hand side through Eric Vufak. We get that one out into our centre-backs. Heinke, though, briefly loses out on position. Thank you, though, searches there to tidy things up. Now, Wosu. Does pretty well there to actually keep the ball under a bit of pressure. We eventually find Ernesto in some space down that right-hand side. Good one, two between him and Owosu. They do clear their lines there somewhat. Do Osnabrück, but now Atilgen plays that one all the way back to Vufak. And hopefully, we can continue here on the attack. Ricardo Grimm in there for Atilgen. He goes down. And for the second game in a row, Eric Vufak off of the bench will get a chance here from the penalty spot. So he's having some good luck here getting some chances off of the bench. This time sends the goalkeeper the wrong way and buries that one bottom left corner, his second goal of the season, and back-to-back -back games. And there is that cushion goal this time a lot sooner. And hopefully that will mean three more points and hopefully even maybe a bit of a rise up the table above that fourth spot. We go 2-0 up early in the second half. And going forward 10 further minutes, yet again, we have a throw in here down this left-hand side. Julian Beigel puts this one into the mix. A big chance for Ricardo Grimm, but someone there got in the way of that shot. Not too sure if it was a goalkeeper or a defender, but a decent deflection there to put that one over the bar. We try and pick out Leon Heinke there from the set piece, but unfortunately can't quite do it. And we are still 2-0 up inside the last half hour. And yet again, going forward about 10 minutes off the back of that previous highlight, nearly inside the last 20. This time it is a free kick here for Osnabrück. They try and play that one over the top. Thankfully, Lucas Search will win that. And good header back there from Julian Beigel to Vufak, who was in a lot more space. Now, Atilgen just holds things up here down this left-hand side. But again, it's been a pretty comfortable watch this game. A lot different to what we were experiencing in those first few games of the season and those last couple of last. Now, Ernesto... In there for Grimziani, gets a good chance there, was onside, but unfortunately just puts that one wide, and it is still 2-0, about to head into the last 20 minutes. And while we are here, we might take off the two players, only on OK ratings. Ziani on 6.4, we will give Shimp the Shrimp a debut off of the bench, and also Ricardo Grimm only going OK. Tim Lehman can come on for him. 
still 2 0 up with 20 minutes left. And we're just into the last 10 minutes of this game. We have a throw in here just inside of the opposition half. Lehman does find a teammate. And we get that into the midfield there through Julian Weigel. Search and now Vufark in a lot of space yet again down this left hand side. Tries to pick out the shrimp up front, but unfortunately, a bit too much on that one and couldn't in goal can claim that. For Osnabrück, they will still think a goal here. We'll put them right back into this game. A Wosu there surprisingly does win a header, but unfortunately, no one home to try and get that ball back for us. But a Wosu, good hustle yet again to get the ball. And now a ball played over the top there, and the shrimp does get it here, albeit tight angle just inside the byline. Now Ernesto tries to fizz that one into the mixer, but Osnabrück do clear their lines. But yet again, we are on the attack right off the back of that clearance Ernesto. It's a bit iffy here, but we have the ball inside the box and the shrimp dispossesses the defender and he'll put it away for a debut goal. The shrimp there with some sneaky work and he picks up a goal. He absolutely loves it too, doing a dance there down in front of our fans. And that is how you make a debut in on loan from Eintracht Frankfurt. Iffy clearance there and it was Gyampi there who was too slow on the ball. Point blank range, tucks that one away bottom left corner. And that should absolutely wrap up all three points, 3-0, as we do into the dying stages of this game. Also, might be time to make a few substitutions, as we still have a few left, a few players down to Red Hearts. We'll bring on Pitlicka in place of Leon Heinke. Also, Ogbidi for Mike Awosu. Those will be all our subs used off the back of going 3-0 up. And just in the last few minutes of this game, we do get one more highlight, but should be picking up all three points with that 3-0 lead. The shrimp there does look to find Iwazida inside the box. Some good touches for him there, and does look for that top right corner just over the bar. Would have been an interesting effort there from our centre-back, who usually scores with his head. But as you can tell, really, really dominant display yet again. Lots of shots and a fair few on target as well. We pretty much match our XG and pick up a comfortable 3-0 win over Osnabrück, as you saw earlier, expected to be doing a lot better than they currently are, but overall, probably one of our better overall performances of the season. Most players who got on the field had a good rating, a very good win, and we'll see what that does to the table come the end of today's episode. We are still in fourth, but obviously, with Schalke still being in third, it does mean currently in a promotion playoff spot, but certainly our form is right back on track off the back of that rough start to the season. We pick up, I believe that is, our seventh win in a row and sixth in a row in the league as we beat Osnabrück 3-0. And back in the inbox, I'll back of those two games in today's episode. Very good wins as we keep the clean sheet in both on either side of transfer deadline day where we did bring in Shimp the Shrimp and he did score on debut. Did the young 18-year-old hopefully does a decent job for us as a backup to Ziani Walzizek is still out with that broken ankle and going back to the table now right in a promotion hunt for this season, which is good off the back of being in the relegation zone come the end of last week, albeit still early days. But if we can continue this good form off the back of those slight changes that we did make come the start of yesterday's episode, hopefully we might even rise up the table a little bit further and could even gain automatic promotion up to the two Bundesliga. We'll see how things go though. Hopefully that is what can happen and we can inject some more money into the club through that promotion as well, of course is the remainder of our run in the DFB Pockle this season. But I think that will do it for today's episode. It does feel like we're back here at Locomotive Leipzig off the back of a rough end to last season and a rough start so far this week. Things have been going very well. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well tomorrow, we'll come back. And speaking of the DFB Pockel, we'll come back in October. I think we'll take on Ingolstadt. They're doing decently this season. Always a team expected to be up there. So we'll play them away from home in the league. Hopefully still be right in a promotion hunt. And then we have had the draw for that second round of the DFB Pockel. We take on a team this time from the Bundesliga. Again, though, it's at home. We take on Stuttgart. No doubt that one is going to be very, very tough. But on our recent form, if that can continue, maybe got a sneaky chance. And of course, either way, we do get a good payout for making it that far in the cup. So hopefully we might be able to do another upset and keep adding some funds here to the balance 
at Lokomotiv Leipzig, but tomorrow we'll play that second round of the DFB Pokal against Stuttgart as well as take on Ingolstadt in the free league. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Don't know